In this video, I'll prove some basic properties of groups. The first thing I want to prove, the identity of a group is unique. And I proved this in a previous video that the identity of an operation is unique, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Let's suppose we have two identities. E1 and E2 are both identities of my group. E1 star E2 is equal to E1 since E2 is an identity. E2 being an identity tells me that A star E2 is equal to A. Letting A be equal to E1, we have that E1 star E2 is equal to E1. Similarly, since E1 is an identity, we have E1 star E2 is equal to E2. This time I'm using the fact that E1 star A needs to be equal to A since E1 is an identity. And since the output of an operation needs to be unique, we must have E1 is equal to I E2. I started with two identities and I showed that they in fact had to be equal. The next thing I want to show is that a group element has exactly one inverse. So not only are identities unique, but inverses are unique as well. Let's suppose both B and C are inverses of A. That tells me that A star B is equal to my identity and A star C is equal to the identity. Since these are both equal to the identity, I have A star B is equal to A star C. And we can multiply both sides of the equation, provided we multiply on the same side. So since a group operation is not guaranteed to be commutative, if I multiply on the left by B, I need to multiply by the left on the left of both sides of the equation. So on this side, I multiplied by B on the left. So over here, I need to put the B on the left. Group operations are associative, so I can move the order of the parentheses around and make this B star A in parentheses. We already know that B star A is the identity since B is an inverse. So now I have E star B is equal to E star C. E star B is just equal to B and E star C is equal to C. Therefore, both of these had to be the same. I started with two inverses and showed that they were actually the same. I really only had one. And I wanna talk a little bit about notation. We've been using a star for our group operation. So I've been denoting my group operation by the star. We can also use a plus or a time sign. And from now on, I'm gonna use the multiplicative notation unless otherwise indicated. There may be times I actually wanna use addition, but instead of writing star all the time, instead of writing A star B, we're just gonna write AB to denote that this means our group operation. When we are dealing with additive notation, we'll denote our identity by zero and the inverse of A will be negative A. If we're dealing with multiplicative notation, then we'll denote our identity by E, and the inverse of A will be denoted by A to the negative one. I now want to prove the cancellation law. Let's let G be a group and A, B, and C be elements in my group. Then A, B equal to A, C implies B equal to C, and B, A equal to C, A implies B equal to C. So let's start with A, B equal to AC. We cannot divide in our groups, but we do know that every element has an inverse. So I'm going to multiply by A inverse on the left. So I have A inverse AB equal to A inverse AC. We know A inverse A is equal to the identity. So now I have EB equal to EC and EB is just B, EC is just C. So therefore I have B equal to C. On the other hand, if I have BA equal to CA, I'll multiply by A inverse on the right. So I'll have BAA inverse equal to CAA inverse. Once again, AA inverse is equal to the identity. So I have BE times CE and anything times the identity is equal to itself. So once again, I have B equal to C. Let's suppose G is a group and A and B are elements of my group G. 
Then AB equal to E implies A is equal to B inverse and B is equal to A inverse. We already have half of what we need for this. We know that AB is equal to E. Now I just need to show that BA is also equal to E. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply by B on the left. Therefore, I'm going to put a B on the left of this side, so I have BAB, and a B on the left here, so BE. We know that BE is just B by the definition of the identity. I'm now going to multiply by B inverse on the right. So this time I'll have BAB, B inverse, equal to B, B inverse. I'm going to put the B inverse on the right on both sides of this equation. That tells me that BA times E is equal to E since BB inverse is the identity. And since A times the identity is A, we have BA is equal to E. So now I have that these are inverses of each other. Let G be a group and AB belong to my group. Then the inverse of AB is equal to B inverse A inverse. If I want to distribute an inverse among parentheses, I need to switch the order. The last theorem that I proved allows me to say that if I can multiply AB by the thing I'm claiming is the inverse and get the identity, then they are inverses. Since my group operation is associative, I can move parentheses around. So we have A times BB inverse times A inverse. BB inverse is the identity. Anything times the identity is itself. And then AA inverse is the identity. So I multiplied AB by something and got the identity. Thus, that thing that I multiplied by, B inverse A inverse, has to be the inverse of AB. My next one, if I have a group and a single element A in that group, then the inverse of the inverse is equal to A. So A inverse inverse is equal to A. We know that A inverse A is equal to the identity. And earlier I proved that if AB is equal to the identity, then A inverse is equal to B and B inverse is equal to A. Well then here that means the inverse of the inverse has to be equal to A, since I multiplied A times the inverse of A and got the identity. The last thing I want to talk about is the order of a group. For order, I want G to be a finite group, so I want to have a finite number of elements. The number of elements in my group G is known as the order, and it's denoted with these vertical bars. It kind of, look like, kind of looks like an absolute value. As an example, in a previous video, I defined Z6. This was the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can see there are six numbers here, so the order of Z6 is equal to 6.